We need to do something about that. Now, when we bought them gates, it was before Poppy even came into our lives. So it was only designed to contain Teddy, but Poppy is about a third of Teddy's size. So that little dog can squeeze through those gates and out of doggy prison effortlessly. So that needs a solution as soon as possible. And I'm gonna to get to it later in the video because there is something else that I need to get on with first. So I'm just heading down to the bottom end of the property, down to the stone tiny house. If you saw our last video, you'll know that we are now planning to renovate that much sooner than we anticipated. But before we can even start any of the renovations, there is one dirty job that needs doing first. So the first thing that you notice when you come into this building is the stink. My God, does it smell. I mean, the previous owners obviously left it abandoned for God knows how long, and they've just stored like bits of firewood and things like that in here. When we took ownership of it, they actually came and took all of the firewood out, but they left loads of like twigs and things like that. But there's obviously been rats and various other animals living in here. It's pretty grimy if I'm being honest. And then since we've taken ownership, We've also used it to store firewood and things like that. Even though we don't have a fire yet, we've obviously had to fell lots of trees and trim lots of trees. So we needed a space to keep it in. So this place was unused, we've used it, but I wanna get this floor cleaned and nice and clear because if the first step in this renovation is taking the roof off, then I wanna make sure that I've got a clean and level space to be putting up ladders or scaffolding or whatever's needed. So before I can bring all of this firewood out and the things we want to keep, oh God, the sun is so bright, I'm gonna sneeze. No, it's gone. Um, I need to build some type of temporary wood stand to get it all out and put it on to keep it nice and dry so it can still dry out. Oh, I'm definitely gonna sneeze. No, what is going on? Oh man, this is a thing with this building, the tiny house being down at the bottom end of the property. Everything we have is stored up at the top end. So I can only take what I can carry. Whew. So now I'm back up for trip number two. So it's gonna be quite a long time until we have a wood burner where we can actually burn this wood. It's gonna be a while till we have one in the tiny home. We don't have one in the main house. So for now, we just need to build something temporary because we're not really sure where we would even put a proper wood store at the moment. Uh, so we'll worry about that down the line. For now, we have got the most basic of designs, but hopefully it's gonna work. So in a nutshell, this design is basically two breeze blocks, big chunky ones, turned up so they've got the holes in the top, lay a couple of these across as a base, a couple each side sticking out from within the holes, and then you just got something to balance it up and then we'll put a tarp over the top. I'm just gonna drill a few holes in this because I don't want it to pull water onto this. These are just some very cheap fence posts from the shop. Pressure treated wood was so expensive and I wasn't gonna pay 15 euros for just like one piece of wood. And these were only about 250 each. So absolute bargain. And the drill batteries died. <sighs> Annoyingly, I don't have a spare one anymore. The spare one seems to have picked up some type of fault and it's not really charging properly. Unfortunately, we're running out of daylight now as well. The clocks went back an hour uh, last weekend and now it means it's getting dark at about kind of half five, six o'clock. So I'm gonna be out of light before this battery can charge. So I'm gonna go stick it on charge, have a nice dinner for the evening, ward the dogs, and I'll pick you back up again tomorrow morning. Let's try this again, shall we? Take two.
So that's everything that we want to keep to burn for a fire stacked up nicely. There's still lots of wood in there, but you know, it's longer branches or smaller twigs, uh, which aren't really ready for stacking. So I've got an old pallet. I'm going to shove that next to it, just stack everything on that. And then there's a load of twigs and things that just need burning. So I'm going to pull all them out, put them to one side for another day when we have a fire. So all of this wood gone, that side is cleared. Now it's just time to get rid of all of this stuff that the previous owner left and then give the place a really good sweep. So if I'm being honest, I am not looking forward to this part. It's gonna be the dirtiest part of the job. I think I need to take some precautions because there's gonna be lots of, uh, the word's not toxic, but lots of harmful airborne particles from all the rat droppings and just the filth that's in here built up over 50 plus years so i'm going to take some precautions i'm going to stick on a mask put on a suit oh god okay let's get on with it So I am relieved to tell you that the suit fits perfectly. I was a bit worried because they only come in one size and the average Portuguese man is much shorter than I am. I'm six foot two and I was getting worried this morning thinking that this suit was gonna be too small. It was gonna be pulling me awkwardly in all sorts of places. And I was gonna be putting myself on camera wearing something that was gonna be revealing parts of me that I don't want revealed on the internet. <laughs> Uh, yeah, anyway, thankfully it's nice. It's very comfortable, albeit a bit hot, but yeah, I'm not bringing shame to my family name today. Anyway, time to start clearing. Look at this. So, I was just pulling some of it out and I saw this shimmering underneath. Look at the size of this thing. Sorry, if you can't tell what it is from the camera, it's a, a snake skin that's been shed, but all in one piece. It's probably, I don't know, a meter long, maybe a bit longer. Let me try and show you how long it is. That's touching the floor. So impressive. have it a clean-ish floor I mean all the stuff's gone I've swept it all but you know it's not perfect because this guy is going to be coming down soon and there's going to be loads more dirt in here as time goes on I want to take out some of this concrete pointing so there's going to be a lot more mess to clear up I tell you what, it feels so good to have got this done. This is the first time we've touched anything on this building. So this really feels like now the project is getting underway and we're starting to make progress, which is amazing. Right, so now the building's cleared. Our neighbor gave us some pomegranates the other day. So Victoria is gonna make some juice. Yeah, we both like the flavor of pomegranates, but the faff to taste ratio isn't good for us so we're <laughs> just going to smash the living daylights out of them instead <laughs> i haven't made pomegranate juice before oh hello poppy hello dogs in the kitchen highly hygienic isn't it 
yeah, I haven't made it before. So I've basically brought all of the kitchen equipment, hoping that I've actually got what I need. We have a sieve, spoon, shot glass. Not quite sure why I picked that one up. And um, yeah, all importantly, I have the pestle or the mortar. Tell me if you know which one it is, because I absolutely have no idea yeah, which I can, room I'm I can never remember. <laughs> okay, first step. I know the first step is definitely to crack them open and take out the the jewels. I think they call them pomegranate jewels. My granny taught me that you're meant to tap the back of the spoon the skin to actually take these out but so far I've got four pieces <laughs> so I think I'm going to try a different tack. I don't know how to tell if the uh, pomegranate is ripe. Do you know Ricky? Uh, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> no, the reason I'm saying is these two here are kind of just completely yellow, but the um, the one I'm doing now was much, much pinker. So I'm hoping that we're not going to have just a shot glass of juice. Oh, maybe that's why I brought this out. <laughs> People out there who are more experienced with this than us, how do you know when a pomegranate is ripe? Ripe for the juicing. <laughs> You absolute nutter. <laughs> I think I might have been slightly mistaken when I said that eating a pomegranate was a bit of a faff because this is definitely also a faff. <laughs> But the juice that's come out of these looks really nice. And although I only ended up taking two of them apart, the amount of fruit and uh, flesh that came out of it was quite a lot. So I've pummeled it with the stick. And although there are definitely still some of them that haven't popped, I'm gonna try and sieve it off and see where we get to, and maybe tip it back into the dish again and go from there. Okay, so there were loads of seeds that weren't popped. This is so much quicker than bashing it with, that, with the stick. It's easier just to squash it. So if you are making any pomegranate juice, cut out the first step, just go to this one. <laughs> Do you want to try some? 100%. Yeah? <laughs> Shall we get some glasses? Yes. Thank you. Big reveal. Cheers. Cheers. Hi, I added buddy. some lemon because it was a little bit sweet. Okay. Well, for my taste anyway. Well, uh, smells <laughs> strong. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, that's really nice actually. Refreshing. Mm. It's apparently really good for anti-inflammatory, anti-wrinkle, anti-tiredness. I need all of the above. <laughs> there were loads of other things as well that it's apparently good for. Nice. I'd go for that again. Yeah, gives you one really strong pummeling arm as well. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. I am very sleepy today. Uh, I got kept up a lot last night, thanks to Ted. For the last few days, he has been licking one of his back paws. I say his paw, it's the top of his foot. So not really the underside, the top. And yeah, last night, oh my God, I woke up maybe every half an hour, every hour to him licking it. And anybody who has a dog out there, you will know that at times it can be the most annoying sound ever i don't know what it is and sometimes it's so disgusting but yeah i could not get back to sleep it took me ages and then just as i nodded off again i got woken up by him doing it again he's okay we can't see any signs of anything on the paw he was actually at the vet two days ago because he had to have his annual booster for his vaccinations the vet looked at it and said she couldn't see anything nothing to worry about 
not really sure why he's doing it. I think tonight we might put a sock over it just to try and stop him doing it and try and kick him out of the habit. But yeah, I nipped out yesterday, bought some of this. Don't know if you can see, basically a small fencing that's designed to keep in cute little things like this chick, rabbits and such. It's got a very tight weave, if that's what you call it. I don't think it is a weave, but the gaps in the fence are very small. No way on earth Poppy is getting through that. So yeah, I am going to crack on now, get this on, and hopefully this should stop Madam from getting into mischief. So if you're wondering how I'm gonna fix it, I've got 100 cable ties here. I'm pretty confident they're gonna do the job. And just so anybody's a bit worried about Poppy, we're not putting this on because she is getting out and escaping and running wild. She wants to be near us all the time. She is a super clingy dog. And basically the only time she is squeezing through that gate is when one of us is on the other side and she wants to be on the land with us. But sometimes she just needs to be contained up here on the top. So that was a lot more fiddly than I thought it was gonna be. Oh, you can see, I was worried you're not gonna see it on camera. You can barely see this here. Obviously, I still need to take off uh, these, give them a snip, but yeah, I think this should do the job. Had I thought it through a bit more, I didn't really think until I finished it, I would have put the fence on the other side of the gate, just to reflect how the fence is on the fence posts. But to be honest, if you step away, can barely even tell there's something on there so I really don't think it matters too much. Right that's that done. If I'm being honest it's not the best solution or the best finish in the world. Really I wanted something solid but you know this was all I could find in the shops at sort of lay notice so maybe one day we'll change it up again but let's see what victoria thinks right come on then give me your opinion what do you think it's almost um invisible that's exactly what i said <laughs> um i'm imagining you're not intending to leave these no. on here they need a snip yes can you see it it's not perfect but oh. it'll do i think it'll stop her which is yeah the main goal she's quite athletic we're gonna to have to see. Yeah, but I don't think she'll jump and squeeze through. <laughs> no. And on that note, I'm gonna leave it for today. I'm gonna to head off and do the other gates. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.